Oh, hey, it's me, Mr. Peterson. I I'm just here on my lunch break. I, I brought a pasty. Do you know about the pasty? Some people mispronounce it as pasty. The pasty is a meat pie. They're very popular in northern Michigan. You know, I wonder why that is. Let's find out together and do some lunchtime learning. Let's get that pesky pronunciation out of the way. To help pronounce it correctly, it rhymes with the word nasty. Pasty. Once you taste it, that will definitely not be the word you use to describe it. As we explore the history of this delicious treat, we'll be creating a timeline of important events. Timelines help us as readers and writers keep track of the order or sequence in which events happen. It is believed the first pasty was made in Cornwall County, England, around the 1300s. Cornwall was known for their mining of tin. The miners that went into the ground needed food that was self-contained, self-insulated, and was packed with calories to provide energy as the miners would sometimes be in the mines for over 12 hours. The pasty looked like a hand-sized pie that was stuffed with meat and potatoes, rutabagas, and onions. Shortly after Michigan became a state, in 1837, it was discovered that the Upper Peninsula was rich in minerals and miners were needed. So, in 1840, miners from Cornwall, England, immigrated or came to Michigan to help develop the mines. Along with the miners came one of their favorite foods, the pasty. When word got out that the mines were rich in copper, immigrants from Finland and Italy started to arrive in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan around the 1880s. These new immigrants learned to make the pasties from the Cornish miners, which helped them gain in popularity. After the Mackinac Bridge was completed in 1957 and opened up the Upper Peninsula to tourism, and the pasty went from a cooked at home favorite to a menu favorite at restaurants. It became so popular that the governor of Michigan in 1968 declared May 24th, Michigan Pasty Day. Today, pasties are still enjoyed and there are numerous festivals in honor of this historic meat pie. Now that we learned the history of pasties, we could use the timeline about it to write a sequence paragraph, but you know what? I would find it a shame not to take advantage of this delicious moment to change gears and write a descriptive paragraph. So I decided to write a descriptive paragraph from the point of view of a miner in a copper mine in the UP from 1875. When you write a descriptive paragraph, you use sensory images and details. Sensory images describe your senses. How do things look? What do you hear? How do things feel? And how do they smell and taste? I'm also writing from somebody else's point of view, a miner from the late 1800s. So I need to think about how their senses might be different from mine and how their life experiences were different from my own. Okay, let's take a listen to my descriptive writing. While I'm reading, pay attention to the descriptive language and the sensory images it creates. Here we go. I, I hear someone shout, lunch! And the word echoes off the damp, dark walls of the mine. At last, it's lunchtime. My stomach's rumbling loudly, eager for the meal ahead. Using the sleeve of my thick denim jacket, I clean the reddish-brown dust from the copper ore we mine here off my shovel. Then I lean the shovel against the mine's wall. The lamp on my helmet cast a cozy, dim glow, essential for seeing in the dark mine. I carefully remove this lamp and place it on the ground. Next, I position the blade of my shovel just above the small flame of the lamp. With hands stiff and grimy from the morning's work, I reach under my jacket to find a small cloth bundle. I stashed there earlier, unwrapping it carefully. Touching only the thick outer crust, I reveal my lunch. A pasty. 
I set the pasty on the shovel, letting it warm slightly over the lamp's gentle heat. The pasty feels warm to the touch, like a stone sitting in the sun. Holding it by the thick crust, I take a big bite from the center. The crispy shell breaks, releasing a burst of peppery gravy, and I savor the mix of beef, potatoes, and a hint of sweet onions. Each bite is a delicious blend of flavors, making me forget the mind's chill for a moment. As I enjoy my meal, the warmth of the food spreads through me, easing the aches in my muscles. When I finish, I stand, I reattach the lamp to my helmet, grab my shovel, and prepare to continue working. In six more hours, I'll climb out of this mine and head home, already dreaming of tomorrow's pasty. What do you think? Could you imagine what it was like being a miner eating a pasty for lunch? Could you feel what it was like to be down in the dark mine and eating a tasty pasty that you were warming over your headlamp? Descriptive writing is fun. It gives us a chance to be creative. Next time you're eating lunch, maybe you can make it a learning lunch. Imagine what words you could use to describe what the food in your lunch tastes like.